Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's screen share video tutorial on how to analyze your survey results in Survey123. In a previous tutorial we looked at how to create and design your own survey and if you have not yet done that I would advise that you go to that video first and view that content before watching this video. Upon logging into Survey123 after your survey results are in you can locate your survey in the My Survey section or they just pop up here on this home screen. You can notice that this was the one that I created in the previous video. How livable are your parks? And you can see that since that video, six uh, participants have registered their surveys or have completed their surveys. So you can have a look at those and you can open the survey if you wish by clicking on that link button too. However, we can go through and quickly get to our Analyze tab by pressing on the Analyze button just below. You can make changes again if you wished to your design, to your collaboration, and you could also look at your data. But we're going to begin with clicking on the Analyze button. And it's going to bring up our survey results in a number of different ways. And I'm going to swap this over quickly to column. And you'll notice that on our left side, or actually before that, you notice that we have our tab bar up the top here where last time we were designing and we collaborated and this time we're in the Analyze uh, tab. And once we're in the Analyze tab, you can view these questions down the side. You can click on them to filter questions or to um, look at that particular question. Um, but on our right, we have a number of ways in which our graphs, uh, which our sorry results can be displayed. If we look here at the moment, uh, all of our results are being displayed in column graphs to each of our questions. For instance, does the park have barbecue and picnic facilities? Well, we can see looking at this column uh, graph that we have three parks that had barbecue and picnic facilities and three that didn't. And in case uh, this is a little bit confusing, we also have our answers down below as both a count and a percentage. Now we can change the way that these uh, results are given to us by clicking up in the top right here. We can access the results as a bar graph too, uh, which is quite similar, just going horizontally rather than vertically. We can also access it as a pie graph, and notice that the count and the percentage are always there. And we can also access it on a map, which is linking to our ArcGIS Online account. And you'll notice here that we have our three red dots, which were representing, uh, yes, I think it was, if I go back here, yes. So our three red dots are representing yes, and our three blue dots are representing no. There were no barbecue facilities. The great thing about this is we can actually, this map is interactive too, we can click and drag around. We can also view the legend. So I didn't actually need to go back to pie graph, I could have clicked legend to see what those colors mean. And if we wanted to, we can actually change the base map too. So at the moment, it's sitting on topographic. We could actually change it to uh, satellite imagery if we wanted to, or any of these other ones. I'm going to leave it as topographic for now. And we can zoom fully in and fully out as needed. So there's some uh, quite some capabilities that are available to us, uh, and that's these capabilities are available for each question. So you can see that. At the moment, all of these questions by default show as a column graph to begin with, but you might find that depending on the question you're asking, some are better, the results are sometimes better suited to a column graph or a bar graph versus a pie graph or versus that spatial representation in a map format. And you may recall that in that previous, um, previous video where we created and designed that we had some uh, different types of questions. For instance, this question here, are public toilets available? If the answer was yes, then they were asked a follow-up question to describe the cleanliness of the public bathroom. And so we see that we only have three results for this question because only three of the six uh, surveys uh, recognize public toilets in the park. We've got a neutral and two very clean, which is a bit surprising for public toilets. If we scroll down, we have that uh, star-based question where they had to rate the quality of the grassed areas, looking at things like length, colour, um, maintenance, etc. 
and we've got an average across the, the uh, six parks. We've also got a breakdown of how each park fared. So we've got a park that was quite average on its, uh, or below average, I should say, with its grassed areas. And we had a couple of uh, really highly maintained grassed areas. And if we wanted to, like, perhaps gather some insights or some uh, trends, we could click on that map button and see if um, locality has everything, anything to do with it. And I can notice here that Brisbane is a capital city. Those two areas that were rated really highly for their grass, number fives, they're actually in the inner, inner city. So there's a little bit of a pattern there, whereas that that two star is right outside, out south, somewhere around Marsden and Logan, which is a, a bit of a rougher neighborhood in the greater Brisbane area. So we can start to gain some insights, identify some patterns and trends in our data by simply looking at uh, the data displayed in different formats. And it's amazing how this column graph really uh, brings to life, or uh, comes to life when we use it in combination with the map and the spatial uh, answers. If we scroll down again, you can also see that we have, we had a question that required students or participants to take a photo of a hazard you've identified in the park. We can click each of these to enlarge them. Um, and if we look carefully here, it looks like there's uh, some kind of gurneying or water cleaning equipment that is out on the footpath. So that could be a tripping hazard, for instance. If we um, look at this one, uh, we could notice that maybe the park is close to roads or car parks, and it also seems to be close to a dog park, which, yes, is enclosed, but potentially there's a hazard there for uh, dogs to attack people or something like that. This one looks like it was taken at New Farm Park, and we can see that the hazard appears to be the fact that there's no fencing between the grassed area and the water, which could be a hazard for uh, children or infants. So we've got those photos there too. Now, this analysis tab is quite easy to get to, and the great thing about it is you can actually print as well. And hopefully it doesn't take me to a printer because I'm not co uh, connected to any, but if you'd like to print these results out, perhaps students are using it as a part of their assessment or something similar, then they can print those results out and uh, glue them into their field booklet or something similar like that. And we're not going to worry about it, it's taking a bit long to load, but it's fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to click on the data button now, the data tab, and this data tab is essentially, oh, here comes my printing, I'm going to, there you go, you can save as, and it will save all of the uh, results from all of the questions in a single document for you for printing at a later date. If I'm in this data tab now, I can see my results as a screenshot. So we don't have the tables or the graphs anymore. We have a really simple, well, we do have one table. We have a table that includes all of our questions and all of our answers to each question in one place. And it has our spatial representations too. And we can click on each of these and it actually tells us or shows us the answers to um, our survey results down the side in this in this panel by clicking on that and we can see them here as well You can see that it's 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 lit up in that blue color to show that that's the park that's been selected But this is a kind of a one-stop shop a snapshot of all your results right here. I will point out some um, Other features of this data tab and that's the export function so you could export your survey results into a CSV file and various other files, Excel, shapefiles, etc. Or you could actually um, create a feature report from it. And I will not be showing that right now because printing of feature reports do consume credits, so 2.5 credits per survey record. So there's six records here, so that would, that would um, take 15 credits from my account if I was to print those. But you can create feature reports from them and you'd have to set up a template and how you wanted those feature reports to be output and then you can generate them. And you, there is also that tab there, that uh, hyperlink there to show how many credits your organization has to see whether you can uh, afford to do that. 
The great thing about Survey123 is that it's also compatible with ArcGIS Online. So if we go to our ArcGIS account, which I've already signed into, and we head to our content tab, you can notice that all of your folders uh, appear to the left in this panel. And if you scroll down, you should be able to find the survey uh, that you've just completed and you've just had a look at as a part of our analysis tutorial. How livable are your parks? You're going to click on that one and it will bring up all of the files associated with that survey at the moment. And you ultimately want to work from uh, the feature layers and I'll just explain the difference between hosted and hosted view. And uh, this, this one here, this hosted layer, really if you click on this one and you go through and look at it in the map viewer, it doesn't allow you to make changes whereas the field worker uh, version, the one with the view, would allow students, depending on uh, the capabilities they're given, or you as a teacher, to be able to make changes to that data. For instance, if there was a mistake made, uh, a geo point was put in the, the wrong place, then you would be able to uh, move that geo point to the desired place. So it depends on what one you want to work from, but you can see that at the moment, all it really looks like if you look at this square box is a couple of dots on a white background because that's the feature layer. And each of those dots has latitude and longitude uh, data, which means that it can be mapped onto the map in ArcGIS Online. So you can either click on here or click on the blue box over here to open Map Viewer. And it will take a moment to load, but it'll load it up as a feature layer in your ArcGIS Online map. So at the moment I'm on Africa, um, but if I was to go to Australia, I would be able to see my field data. And I can go to Australia really quickly by clicking more options and zoom to, and it will take, to me, take me to that map extent. You can see that all six of my results are fitting on this, and if I still want to scroll out a little bit to get some greater context, I could. But we can now essentially use this as a feature layer which we can turn on and off to, uh, to show our survey data. Now why would you use this? It might be that as a part of a, um, an assignment this was just one component of what students had to do when they were looking at parks. You might have had other tasks for them to complete um, that, that required them to have multiple feature layers, uh, maybe things like crime or um, uh, littering, uh, environmental issues, etc. These things might all feed into each other. Again, I'm, I'm kind of making it up on the fly, but if you had an assessment, this might just be one aspect and they need to create a map around this survey data to complement the survey data. Um, and if we click on each one, you can see that your questions and the results of those questions come up next to the question, uh, next to the question. So you can actually see each answer and you can actually access the, um, the photos that each of the students took for their parks that they surveyed. And you can see right up the back here, this student has uh, taken a photo of the graffiti or made note of the graffiti um, on the back fence of that park, which again, um, depending on how you identify a hazard, that uh, might speak to something like an issue with crime in the area, um, which makes the park uh, potentially an unsafe place for kids. But you can actually access all of your data, your survey results in here as well, but you actually have the added function of adding more map layers to uh, this map. Uh, it might be, again, that you want to look at whether traffic and park use and uh, population density had anything to do with the quality or the livability of those parks. And you can start to identify those relationships and trends um, as you begin to add more feature layers to the site. So this is a really great way to use Survey123 in conjunction with ArcGIS Online. And in this video tutorial, you now know how to analyze your results by looking at columns, graphs, pie charts, and also uh, look at your results in ArcGIS Online and be able to add to them with extra feature layers to support uh, any task or goal that you're trying to achieve. Thanks for listening and we hope that this has been helpful.